Hi everyone. So I'm delighted to speak to you all today um, on the ZenMade Summit. Um, really excited to to run through this presentation with you. Um, so so as you can see on the slide, I'm going to talk about Google Ads and um, and how I used it within my own cleaning business to 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 grow to to four cities now. Um, and as I said, you know I I have my own cleaning business, but I also manage. Google Ads campaigns uh, for, for cleaning businesses all around the world um, through my agency, and it's called Project 83. So uh, the details are down at the bottom. So in today's presentation, I'm going to run through the, the, the following things. Um, really, it's to, to give you a, a good summary, a good introduction to Google Ads and how we can use it specifically uh, in the cleaning industry. So this will be really helpful for, for those of you that are new to Google Ads, as well as those of you that are running some campaigns at the moment. So um, to begin with, we're going to just talk about, you know, introduce uh, Google Ads, what it is, uh, where it is, particularly on, on page one of Google. Um, we'll introduce um, the, the, the broad approach and, and I pick out some of the key things that we want to be focused on, you know, as we're setting up the campaigns and as we're managing the campaigns, uh, you know, into the future. We'll then have a look at a simple campaign, a simple case study and uh, start to get you in the mindset of thinking in terms of how do we start to optimize our campaigns? How do we start to get ROI on our campaigns? So we'll, we'll have a look at a, a simple campaign. And then we close up the presentation. We'll, we, we run through the, the pros and cons of using a Google Ads manager uh, versus doing it yourself. Um, and then finally, um, we'll look at Project 83 and the services uh, that I offer. So just to give you a very uh, brief introduction to me, um, my, my background in, you know, my, my route into Google Ads management is, is not very typical um, because, you know, I have, I've gone, come at it through having my own cleaning business. So my own cleaning business called Neat, Neat Services, uh, we, we set up actually a similar time to, to when Amar set up ZenMade. Um, so it's you know, probably around eight or nine years ago. So it's, it really is amazing how time uh, has, has passed. So we're based in the UK, headquartered in London in the capital, and we're, we're, we're in four of the largest cities uh, in the country. So we have a really, uh, you know, established business and it's, it's grown well. And as I said in, in bullet point two, um, the, the, the two main marketing channels that we had most success with uh, was, was Google Ads and, and SEO. So um, SEO, for those of you that don't know what it is, it is uh, it is a really important um, you know, strategy that you want to be implementing in your business. Um, but the issue with SEO is is that you know things that you do today or optimizations that you do today you might not get the benefits of that until 6 12 18 months down the line you might not even see any benefit at all you know your your actions might not have any any impact so seo is important um and you know it, it was very important and continues to be important for our business but it is we see it as like a long term platform um you know in terms of acquiring traffic but google ads is really really effective if you're looking to get out of the gates you know if you're a new business um, and you're in the first few months you want to get started you want to get leads coming in uh, or as you know we we found you know as we we're opening up locations two three and four you know in, in areas that we have no word of mouth fulfill no existing brand and google ads can, was a really really great way to um to basically get a, a short term a burst, short um burst, short term burst of jobs as and when we need so our strategy really um was that we 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 created a strategy and a tem template within google ads that was working really really well within our first location and once we had that strategy and once we had that template it was relatively simple just to, to copy and paste that to our new location uh we obviously had to change things around keywords around locations things like that but broadly the same template applied and really this was what allowed us to very quickly add and launch new locations because we had an established uh, template for our home city we could then just copy and paste that and roll that out to, to new locations so google ads was by far the most effective way more than facebook ads more than partnerships more than offline flyers 
all these things we've tried them all um so google ads was was really the, the most effective way to to get us out of the blocks so uh, the, the the cleaning company itself when i set that up eight nine years ago i really wanted to create a, a business that would would create um you know flexibility you know i had a young family at the time i wanted to spend lots of time with them so i wanted a business to grow and to earn income for me without having to uh, you know, uh, require lots of my time. So I, I, I spend a lot of time around automation, creating processes, and and really now have a, a, a great office management team that run the business for me. So, you know, I only spend about a couple of hours a week uh, on the business. Um, so, you know, the, the majority of my time now um, is spent on the Google Ads management side, and, and I also uh, do some business coaching as well. Um, so my Google Ads management uh, business uh, called Project 83. It really came about completely organically. Um, you know, the, the intention was never to set up a Google Ads agency after setting up my cleaning business. Um, but it became apparent with, you know, chatting to other business owners in, face, in the various Facebook cleaning groups that I was getting some really good results um, on um, with Google ads and, you know, we'd be chatting and people would be asking, you know, if I could have a look at their accounts uh, and that evolved to actually, you know, do you have time for, you know, for me to manage those accounts for you? Um, but obviously at the time when I was running, you know, neat day to day, I didn't have that time. But as I started to process, uh, transition myself out of that business and free up more time, um, I had the time um, to, to take on and manage these accounts. And it was clear that there was quite a big demand from cleaning business owners for, for Google Ads management services. So that was when Project um, 83 was born. So as I said, Project 83, uh, we are a Google Ads management um, agency. Um, we work with cleaning businesses all around the world. Um, you know, people often ask me, Project 83, what's what's the uh, why why the name? So 83 is the eighty-three thousand uh, dollars a month um, over the year that gets you to a million dollars, and and that one of one of the things that you know when I was speaking to new business owners, asking them what they wanted to achieve. This $1 million, this seven figures level was often cited as one of the main goals for their business. And that's why they wanted to, to help, uh, you know, ask me to help with their Google ads to, to try and give them that boost to that level. So that's that's the reason behind the, the, the name Project 83. But as I said, I work with cleaning businesses um, all around the world. Um, and actually, I would say that the majority is US and Canada. I also obviously work with cleaning business owners in the UK and Australia as well. Um, but, but really, the, the, the reason why it's important to note that is that although I'm based in the UK, the way that people, the way that clients search for cleaning services throughout the English speaking world is pretty similar. Um, so, you know, the strategy that we use that, that got us lots of success in the UK, we can apply that in the US, we can apply that in Canada, we can apply that in Australia and get similar success with other cleaning business owners. And the reason for that is, as I said, people search in Google uh, for cleaning services in a similar way. And, you know, with with the, the way that Google Ads is set up, we can relatively easily uh, apply a similar template, a similar approach, um, you know, regardless of the location. So I'm based in, in the UK, but actually the majority of the cleaning businesses I, I work with are actually overseas. So, um as I said, you know, my, my own cleaning business is basically runs on autopilot now. So my time mostly is split between Google Ads management, you know, working with other cleaning business owners. And I also work on the clean and the business coaching side, you know, pre predominantly on the, the systems and automation side of things. So that is what my work week, you know, looks like now. So I, I split my time between Project 83 and, and business coaching. So that's just a very quick background to me. I hope that's helpful. Um, so we'll, we'll jump into to Google Ads now. And, and really, you know, what we have here is we, we've got um, a screenshot of uh, page one on Google um, and what that typically looks like. So the first thing to say that page one is really the holy grail. If you, can, as a cleaning business, can maximise your visibility 
in uh, on page one for a term like cleaning company Chicago, if you're a Chicago-based cleaning company, you will never have a marketing problem, really. This is where the majority of people, in my experience, will go to find cleaning companies. And this is where the, the highest converting traffic is. So as I said, page one is, is changing all the time. But at the very top, uh, this is where you'll find the Google Ads positions. So typically, you type someone types in cleaning company Chicago, the top four positions will all be Google Ads positions. And you know, this has changed, you know, maybe five years ago, it may have only been two positions, or the, the top position was Google Ads. But you know, Google is a, a for-profit business, they need to show uh, you know, their, their investors, the stock markets, that they are growing their profits, growing their businesses. So it's inevitable that the the number of Google ads, you know, visibility, the Google ads visibility on page one will increase because obviously each time someone clicks on a Google ad, they are paid. Google is paid as a business. So we've gone from one, you know, the top at uh, the top position being Google ads to the top two to the top four now. So Google ads is really the majority of the top page, uh, top of page one when you when you do these searches. And it's important to know that as people, you know, the, the percentage of searches on mobile is going up versus de desktop and versus tablet, that because the screen on mobile is a lot smaller, a far greater percentage of that initial landing page uh, for these terms will be Google Ads. So Google Ads are becoming more rather than less important as Google itself grows as a business, but as well as you know mobile becoming a more dominant platform um, for, for search. So Google Ads is at the very top and in the middle of the page is, is a relatively recent um, you know, introduction by Google. This is where your Google My Business profiles, your GMB profiles sit. And this is where you will create a profile, a Google My Business profile. You will tell Google where you're based, your location, what services you offer. And this is where you can get clients to leave reviews, you know, uh, ratings. Um, and really, this is important because, um, you know, if someone types in cleaning company Chicago, Google will look at the location of the person doing the search and will look at the, the location of your, your office or your where your cleaning business is based. And if you if, if your business appears in these top three, um, one of the most important parts will be, you know, the proximity of the searcher to your business location. It will also look at the number of ratings, the average rating as well. So this is a relatively recent uh, introduction by Google, but it's, it's still really important. You know, as business owners, you want to be visible on Google Ads at the top, but you also want to be visible here. So you want to optimize your, your Google My Business profile and make sure that you're getting lots of consistent ratings and reviews uh, to, to boost up your visibility in this middle section. And then at the bottom of the page, you know, this is where your Google, uh, Google SEO um, you know, uh, rankings are. And um, it, it's fair to say that, um, you know, Google SEO is still really important. You know, you do need to be investing in Google SEO, but it is less important than it used to be even five years, certainly 10 years ago. And predominantly because what I said, uh, you know, at the start of this slide is that, you know, the number one position of Google SEO used to be far higher up in page one. We didn't used to have this middle section, this GMB, Google, My, uh, Google Maps location. We didn't have four, uh, four spots for Google Ads, maybe it was two or one. So it used to be the case. So to, to say that if you were a, uh, a cleaning company based in Chicago and you were top ranked in SEO terms that you were you were effectively made. You would get the vast majority of the traffic for people searching cleaning company. Um, but as time has gone on and this ranking is dropped below the page, it has become less important as it once was. It's still important. Uh, and my view is that for business owners that are looking to build a sizable business, if you're looking to get to this seven figure million dollar plus level you want to be maximizing your visibility all on page one you know you want to be doing google ads you want to be maximizing your gmb profiles you want to have an active seo strategy because if you're neglecting one of those your visibility will be less you'll be getting less traffic to your website you'll be marketing and acquiring fewer clients so your growth will come off and you it'll be harder to to hit those those seven figure levels so seo is, is still important it's less important as it was um, but you want to be 
maximizing you want to be visible across all these three sections uh, on on page one so that's a, a brief introduction to to google ads and where you know how prominent it is on page one um so google ads can for people that aren't familiar with the platform it can be incredibly complex i mean one of the great things about google ads is there's so much data so many different variables you can test you can implement um and uh it's great in that respect for, for someone new it can be very very overwhelming so what i've done here is i've just tried to pick out you know the you know four of i would say the most important things to be focused on this will hopefully just get you in the mindset of trying to pick out the the, the key parts uh, of, of, of Google Ads when you're running campaigns. So number one is, is the keyword level. Uh, and this is where everything really starts. So the keywords is, 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 is when we are telling Google, you know, if someone types in a phrase or, uh, you know, a selection of words that contain these specific keywords, we want our advert to show up. So as an example, you know, cleaning company, Chicago. You know, we can uh, we can say to Google Ads you know, for this keyword, you know, the keyword can actually be a group of words as well. So for this keyword, cleaning company in Chicago, if someone types that in, we want our advert to show because we think that someone typing that into Google represents a, a, uh, you know, someone who is looking for a cleaning service in Chicago, who is likely to want to get in touch with us and potentially convert to a client. So we like that as a keyword. The, the reality is, is that people search for keywords in so many different ways. You know, someone might type in cleaning company Chicago. Someone based in Chicago might type in cleaning services near me. Someone else might just type cleaners or cleaning services. So the way that, that there are numerous different ways and combinations of how people search for, for, for cleaning services. And we want to try to capture as many of those as possible. So this is where we are doing the initial keyword selection. We're telling Google these are the types of things that we want our adverts to show for. So this is where it all starts in, in Google Ads when you're creating your, your campaign. So that is really, really key and really, really critical. You don't want a, a too tight a selection that you're missing out on all these different variations. But on the other side, we don't want a, a numerous number of keywords that, uh, you know, many of which aren't targeted, many which won't be very highly converting to clients. Um, and this is where we go on to this point, you know, decide which searches you want to appear for and which you don't. And this is what's, what the negative keyword lists are. So a negative keyword list is almost as important as, a, uh, you know, as which keywords you're going after. Because the negative keywords are those words that you are telling Google Ads. If someone types in a phrase or words uh, into the browser that contain this negative keyword, I don't want my advert to show up for. So a very simple example would be, say, uh, cleaning jobs, Chicago. Someone typing that into Google is likely to be a cleaner looking for work. Um, you know, And if we're running a campaign where we're looking for clients, that is going to be, uh, you know, a, an irrelevant search, really. If someone clicks on that, uh, if someone types in clean job Chicago and clicks on our advert, that is a waste to click. So we want to be telling Google, if someone types in the word, the phrase that contains job, we don't want our adverts to show. And this is one of many, many optimizations that happen in Google Ads. We're trying constantly to make sure our spend is most effectively used to try and minimize any waste. So building a negative keyword list as you're running campaigns is as important as having a, a sound and a tight uh, keyword list to go after to begin with. But this is where everything starts. Um, number two is the customer value side. And this is potentially the most important part of this entire pro, uh, presentation. And this is really having a good understanding of what your, uh, your lifetime, your average lifetime value is for a new customer to your cleaning business. So many people will know what a lifetime value is. And, um, but many people, if you ask them for a specific dollar amount, a specific pound amount, they wouldn't know what an average client is worth to their business. And this is really where they fall down um, because you know, being in our industry, um, there are uh, you know we 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 are lucky that there are lots of 
Um, many of our clients will, will be recurring in some nature. They'll be, we'll be cleaning for them every week, every two weeks, every month. Um, so when we think about the value of that customer or a, a typical customer to our business, we need to be looking at the entire um, you know, uh, period of time they're with our business. So if you are running um, you know, uh, you know uh, a good standard, good, good quality business. And, you know, you say in the residential cleaning space, you'd expect someone to stay with you for an average for you know, 18 months, two years. And if they're spending, say, $100, $150 every week or every two weeks, that quickly adds up to a lot of money. So what we want to be doing is we want to look at all our weekly clients. We want to see what the average life, you know, how long do they stay with us on average? How much do they spend with us each job? We want to be looking at the fortnightlies. We want to be looking at the monthlies and we want to look at the one-offs. And we want to create a, a, a mathematical equation. We just want to take a simple average of that. And that will give you an average customer lifetime value as a number. So that is really, really important um, because we need to know what that what a typical customer is worth because if we don't know that if we are spending plowing money into google ads and we're not knowing you know if we are making money or not that is a really dangerous position to be in and this is when people will start wasting money they don't have an idea they fit they feel like google ads is working for them or they feel it like it doesn't that is the way to waste money you know you if you know that you are getting you know two times three times your ROI. Um, and that is very clear in your mind. That is the way that you will you will quickly grow a, a profitable uh, ads campaign. So this is really really important. If you haven't done that already, sit down and try and create come up with a at least a ballpark number for what that lifetime value is. So once you have that, then we you know uh, point three the lead tracking is really important because. As I said, if say you you said that your average lifetime value for a customer across all your clients was you know just to keep the maths very simple, say five hundred dollars, and you were um, you were putting money into Google Ads and you were finding that the average uh, the cost to bring on um, a new client was say two hundred dollars, you know we put in two hundred, we get five hundred out. You are making money. From an ROI perspective, so this is where lead tracking is really important because, as 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 important it is to know our lifetime value, we need to know what an accurate cost of client acquisition is. So we need to be tracking uh, our leads both for online inquiries. So if someone fills out an online form, we need to know each time that happens. Um, but we also need to track phone calls. Um, and, you know, what you'll find, what I find is that, you know, people will, will often track the online inquiries. You know, they'll have a thank you page on the website and you can drop some Google Ads code in there and that will communicate to Google Ads each time uh, an online form is submitted. And, you know, we, you know from, from someone clicking on a Google advert. But many and most people, I would say well over 90% of cleaning business owners that I speak to will not have phone call tracking phone call tracking set up and phone call tracking is really really important even today um you know many people say it's all about online booking and you know the idea of someone you know filling out a form and booking online is great you know if you are wanting to create an automated business very hands-off but the reality is it's still close to 50 50 you know 50 percent of people who are wanting to book service will probably still want to pick up the phone and call you and ask questions and really build up that rapport, that trust, because ultimately they are trusting you within in their home or in their office space. So we need to make sure that we're tracking phone calls as well, because if we're not, we are missing half the story. We're guessing. And as I said, you know, if you are guessing in marketing uh, terms, this is the way that you will waste money. This is the way that you will flush money down the toilet with Google ads. So we need to make sure that we're tracking online inquiries and phone calls. Um, and it is true that tracking calls it requires a little bit extra work. Um, you know, there are lots and lots of phone tracking softwares out there in the market. Um, and, you know, you will need to pay an additional, small additional fee. It could be $20, $30 a month. But this is really, you know, a drop in the ocean because what you get from that is just a clarity and a very tight campaign. 
Um, and this, you know, if we have a very tight customer lifetime value, if we have very, very tight lead tracking, we know exactly to the dollar uh, what the cost per lead is. It, it becomes a very, very simple uh, mathematical equation. You know, what are we putting in and what are we getting out? And this clarity in terms of your Google Ads campaign is the way that you will make uh, money. So we've got that all in mind. And then the point four is really important because, you know, the, the way to, to run a campaign profitably over the long term is to keep testing. Um, you know, some people think that if you create a really, um, if you create a campaign and you create keywords and, you know, you, you get that all set up, have a good negative keyword list that, that you don't need to do anything. You, you just press, you know, um, launch and it launches and it will just churn off. Uh, leads to your business. Um, so this is the way not to run a campaign. Um, you know, the way that I often tell people is you should think of, um, you know, creating a good campaign and good adverts and selecting your keywords, and negative keywords at the beginning as getting to that final, getting to the final of the 100 meters. Um, you know, you've had to go through all the heats to get there. You know, congratulations, you've now got to the, 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 the start gate of the final of the, the 100 meters. But now you need to run the race. You need to run to get, you know, you need to get to the end of the, the race and to get that gold medal. And this is where the testing uh, is is really comes in because you create the campaign, then you need to let it run. You need to test one thing against another. You need to test one advert versus another. You need to track the performance of one key, keyword versus another. You need to take out negative keywords. So you need to be doing all these things to make sure that you get to the end of the race and win that gold uh, gold medal. So testing is imperative, and this is one of the the key things. You know, when you're running an account, you particularly over multiple months, multiple years. This this is what you need to be constantly doing. You can't just let it go and expect to get good results uh, over time because your account will just die and the performance will, will come off. So um, hopefully that's helpful just to pick out a few of the key parts of, um, you know, in my view, the, some of the most important parts of running a Google Ads campaign. So in this, in this slide and the next slide, we're just going to have a look, a look at a very simple uh, case study. Um, you know, we are, uh, hopefully this will get you into the mindset of starting to think about how Google Ads works and, and get your, uh, you know, creative juices running in terms of thinking about what, what are the things that we need to be thinking about to, to, to really start optimizing. So, you know, we, we, we've we got a house cleaning company in Chicago. We've just set up our first uh, Google Ads campaign and we've hit launch. So what will happen is, you know, you've told Google, these are the keywords we're going after. These are the adverts we want our ads to show when, when these you know, searches happen. And what you'll find is, you know, over the next few days, uh, you know, you'll start to get some, some people clicking. And when you look into what's called the Google search terms report, it allows you to see exactly what people have searched for in their Google browser and your advert has shown for and being clicked on. So, you know, this would be a very typical, um, you know, for, for someone who's, who's new to Google ads, um, you know, these are the types of searches that, that might come up. So um, I'm just asking the question here, you know, we've set our campaign, which do we think is best? So very quickly running through these, number one, someone types in cleaning services. So yeah, that seems fairly relevant. Um, number two, house cleaning jobs. Um, so, so jobs, as we said in the previous slides, is someone that is likely to be looking for work. So straight away, this jumps out as probably a search that, that we want to be excluding, uh, making sure that we don't show for. Uh, number three, best cleaning company, Chicago. So, you know, in my experience, these are the best searches where you have the service plus the location. Um, you know, they tend to be most highly converting. So, so number three looks like a good one. Uh, number four, office cleaner near me. Um, so they are looking for cleaning services, but it's office cleaning. You know, we're a house cleaning company. So again, this is something that we want to be excluding. Uh, someone clicks on our advert, having searched for office cleaning near me, they're less likely to convert. So we want to reduce that wasted spend. And then number five, um, you know, Molly Maid, obviously the name of a cleaning franchise, Molly Maid Chicago. Um, you know, it, this is this is related, and uh, you know, another type of of search um, that, that, that we might come across. So this would be very sort of typical, um, as I said, you know, me having the experience of my own cleaning business and managing 
Google Ads campaigns for, for lots and lots of cleaning companies, I will have already eliminated a lot of these negative keywords out already. But for someone who's new to it, the, this would be very typical of the types of things. So which Google search do we think is best? Um, so the answer is, um, it depends. Um, and this is really where Google uh, Ads starts to get um, more complicated. So you know, what, just quickly going back to the, the last one, you know, we can tell we when we see these search terms to begin with, we can say which ones we like the look of, which ones we don't. So, you know, as I was going through, the jobs one is one that we we is less interested. The office cleaner one is one that, that we're less interested in. So, you know, as an example, why don't we go through the thought process of saying, do we prefer cleaning services or best cleaning company, Chicago, as a search? So the the first thing to note is that we we need to to understand that each keyword is a, a, an auction process. So there will be lots of cleaning companies in your your uh, area that will say, yes, we really like this keyword. We, we 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 like it more than the other one. So we're willing to pay more for a click from that uh, uh, keyword than another one. And it's a, a completely a demand supply uh, auction process. So, you know, for, for the example of cleaning services and best cleaning company Chicago, let's say that cleaning services were paying $1 a click. You know, the reality is it will be a lot more, but say $1 a click. And then for a best cleaning company Chicago, we're saying we're, we're $2. So, Thinking about it purely in terms of the, 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 the cost per click, you know, we're paying twice the amount of money for best cleaning company, Chicago. So if everything else was even and someone type, clicking on each of those adverts had an equal chance of converting and filling out an online form or calling us, we would then say, yes, the cleaning services is cheaper. So that's a, a more interesting keyword. We would prefer to spend more money on that, that cheaper cost per click click keyword. But as I said, this is where Google Ads starts to get complicated because once we have, you know, we get differing cost per clicks, but we also get a differing conversion rate. So what we mean by that is say, um, say the cleaning services keyword, say that is a 20% lead conversion rate. So what I mean by that is that for every five ad clicks, every time someone clicks on their uh, uh, clicks on our advert five times, one person will pick up the phone and call us. So one person will fill out an online form. Um, the, the conversion rates per keyword will all will, will all be different. Um, and this is what I was saying, you know, for best cleaning company Chicago, often when you have the location included in that search, so the service plus the location, then they tend to be higher uh, converting keywords. So it's unlikely we'll be at 50% uh, and actually 20% is a pretty good number. It could be 25%. But again, let's just keep the math simple here. So say 50, you know, say 50 conversion rate for best cleaning company, Chicago. So every time someone uh, searches, uh, clicks on our ad two times, we get one advert, uh, com uh, uh, one uh, lead coming from that. So one online form submission, one phone, phone call. So we, we take these two items here and then we calculate what the cost per lead is. So we need to, with cleaning services, we need five ad clicks at $1 a click to get one lead. So that, that cost per lead will be $5. Um, with Best Cleaning Company Chicago, the, the, co the cost per click is higher, but we're converting one in every two. So our cost per lead for cleaning company Chicago is $4. So what we can see in this very simple example is that our cost per lead for best cleaning company Chicago is actually lower in cleaning services. Um, and you know, if we were just purely looking at the cost per click, that might be something that would be surprising. Um, but really, we want to be looking at the cost per lead. So in this example, best cleaning company Chicago is a more interesting, a more attractive keyword than cleaning services. So we want to be channeling more of our money into this lower cost per lead keyword than the, the, the higher one, which was which was cleaning services. So 
as you can see, this is where we start, the data starts becoming more important. And this is where conversion tracking is, is, is absolutely critical because if there's any ambiguity in these numbers, if we're not tracking phone calls, for example, if we're not correctly tracking our online form submissions, these numbers will be guesswork. And you could be you could think that you're running a profitable campaign, but actually you're you're running a, a loss-making campaign because these numbers uh, are inaccurate. So as I said, this is where things start to get complicated. And these numbers aren't static either. You know, these will change week on week. And this is why we need to be constantly reviewing our campaigns, constantly keeping on top of things. Um, and, you know, you may find, for example, that best cleaning company, Chicago, the conversion rate is going down from 50 to 10% for one week, or your cost per click is going from two pounds to three pounds. We need to be aware of what this means for our cost per leads and our ROI. So this is where conversion tracking is, is really key. So hopefully I've not lost too many of you in this. You know, this is really where we start to get in the mindset of how we run campaigns. But as you can see, it can quickly can get very uh, complicated, you know, particularly if the, for those of you that are new to, to the process. But, but saying that, if you have a watertight lead tracking uh, on your campaigns and you know what your lifetime value is, then you have a big clear advantage against the vast majority of people in this industry that don't know this. Because if you are sure that you are getting, uh, you know, uh, $2 out for every $1 you're putting into Google ads, you want to be maximizing, you want to be putting as much money into it as possible. Um, so you want to be taking advantage of these people that, that don't have that clarity. So um, in this slide, just wanted to cover off, um, you know, a few of the points when you are thinking. And, and I was obviously in this exact position when I was, um, you know, running my own cleaning businesses. I used agencies before agencies before I, I used it myself. And, you know, uh, over the recent years, I obviously took it all in house and, and completely managed Google Ads campaigns for our own cleaning business myself. Um, but there are various um, things that you want to be thinking about when you are deciding whether to use a Google Ads manager or to do it yourself. And Number one is really where I started off. Um, you know, the, the I've tried but failed uh, comment is, is very, uh, very, very uh, common. Um, you know, as I said, you know, Google Ads can be very, very complicated for those of you that are very new to it. So, you know, you may have put a few hundred dollars into it. <clears throat> um, you, or you may not be sure where to start, but using a specialist, using an agency can really help get you at the curve. You can, you can work with that agency, ask them questions about why they've set things up in a certain way or why they've changed it. Or, you know, you can use them as a way to increase, improve your knowledge um, of, of that. Um, so you can increase, improve your knowledge as well as reducing any um, wasted spend. Um, because as I said, you know, Google makes it incredibly easy to to waste money if you don't know what you're doing so google ads you know you're working with the google ads manager can be really effective because it can reduce that wasted spend um, and you can improve your knowledge as well obviously there is a management fee for using people like that but you just you want to be weighing those those pros and cons up uh, as well and point two is is really really a really important one, particularly particularly for those of you that, that may be already running Google Ads uh, campaigns, um, because you know as I said earlier in this presentation, the uh, you know, having an understanding of what your lifetime value is is really important, and we're lucky in this industry that uh, a large proportion of our clients will likely be recurring. They'll be weeklies, fortnightlies, and. As I said here, you know, particularly in the residential cleaning space, you know, a, a typical recurring client can be with you 18 months, two years. And if they're spending, you know, 100, $150 a time every week or two weeks, this can quickly add up. So the reality is, is that, uh, you know, recurring clients are far more valuable than one-off clients uh, in that regard. Um, so here, what I'm saying is that, you know, you, you want to be thinking, you know, if I use an agency, is the agency bringing me more revenue, more clients than if I was doing it myself? And is the additional revenue that they're bringing me worth the, the, the management fee that I'm having to pay them? 
And one of the ways to, to really make it very simple, as I said, the, the value of a recurring client is far in excess of, of one offs. So if you uh, have if your agency is bringing you just one extra recurring client a month, it is likely that that you know, it far exceeds any management fee that you're having to pay for them. So this can make things very, very simple for you. So, you know, you could say doing it myself and spending X thousand dollars a month on Google ads, I was getting say 10 recurring clients a month. Uh, okay. I'm going to use, test out this Google ads manager. Um, and they are bringing me 15 uh, recurring clients. Um, so the difference is they're bringing me five extra recurring clients that the lifetime value of those five clients is three thousand dollars a time is that fifteen thousand uh dollars that they're bringing me how does that compare to the, the management uh, fee that i'm having to pay them and the reality is is that you know that will far exceed uh, any management fee for any google ads uh, management company so this is a really uh, easy way to think about it and you know you should think about it you know if they're even bringing you even one additional new recurring client a month, it's likely to be a no-brainer in terms of what they're bringing you versus the, um, um, you know, the, um, the the cost of the management fee. And there's obviously, obviously, the the other the, the final point to make as well that you know there will be time savings benefits as well. So you know you won't need to be doing it. You know you won't need to be spending time out of your day to to, to run these campaigns. So there is also the additional benefit of, of saving that time as well. So in this final slide, I just wanted to talk through um, our services at Project 83. So as I said, we're a Google Ads management company. So um, if you are interested in us managing the campaigns for you, uh, we, we basically set our, our fees in the following way. So we, we charge a one-off setup fee. Uh, at the beginning to set up all your campaigns and then we charge a monthly management fee to to manage the campaigns on an ongoing um, basis and um, the the fees themselves depend on how much you're spending through the, the Google Ads platform so obviously if you have a much larger account and you're spending lots more money and you maybe you're in multiple locations it will mean that there's more of my time that's needed to, to manage and optimize those accounts so the, the fee for managing those types of accounts will be higher. So it's it really depends on uh, the, the monthly ad spend. That's the, the, the primary uh, driver of that. So the, the setup fee, just to give you an idea of what's involved is, um, you know, if you were to give uh, give me the green light to, to set up the campaigns for you. So we we, uh, we go into Google uh, Ads, the dashboard, create your campaigns. We we download all the, 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 the keywords, the initial group of keywords that are, are most highly converting uh, in in our experience, um, we create the ad copy, uh, we upload um, a negative keyword list. It's actually you know, about five, 6,000 words long. So that in itself is worth many thousands of, of dollars to you uh, before you even start. So we create the campaigns in Google Ads and then we make sure that uh, you know all the, the the lead tracking is going through correctly. So we we use a landing page template uh, for all our clients. So this landing page is optimized, um, you know, to 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 uh, to to get phone calls, to get leads, to get online form submissions from the the ads traffic. So it's one of those things that you know the reality is you shouldn't be driving cold uh, ad traffic to your homepage. It's much better, and you'll get a much higher conversion rate if you're using a dedicated landing page. And, that, and that's what we use. So we create your landing page template. And then once that's created, we make sure that all the lead tracking is really tight. So it tracks. So Google Ads is tracking all the online form submissions. It's tracking all the phone call uh, tracking. So all the costs involved with using those softwares are included uh, in, the, in the, the management fee. So that's the setup fee. That, that's what needs to get set up before we actually launch your campaigns. And then the monthly fee um, is really this, this ongoing testing and iteration element that I talked about about earlier in the um, the presentation so we are testing lots of things we're tracking which keywords are performing what the cost per leads are what the conversion rates are you know do we need to put more money into the higher performers uh, we want to be making sure that our negative keyword lists are building and that gives us greater protection and minimizes wasted spend and um, we yeah so there, there are numerous things that we we test and um, iterate on on an ongoing um, basis but this is really what uh, is covered by the monthly management fee so 
if you guys have got any questions you want to uh, you know have a, a quick talk about your account if you want me to manage it for you want an idea of the pricing uh, just contact me at the that that, that uh, email address hello at project 83 uh, .co.uk. Um, the website, um, if you want some further information, is obviously just www.project83.co.uk. But anyway, uh, I hope this presentation has been helpful, um, and I uh, look, from, look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks.